Hey, we're working on goodness of fit problems, hypothesis testing problems. Uh, and right now we're going to work on uh, one that's a multinomial populations problem. All right, this is uh, question four from your book um, from chapter 12. M&M Mars, makers of M&M chocolate candies, conducted a national poll in which more than 10 million people indicated their preference for a new color. The tally of the poll resulted in the replacement of tan-colored M&Ms with a new blue color. In the brochure, Colors, made available by M&M Mars Consumer Affairs, the distribution of the colors of plain candies is as follows. 30% of them are brown, 20% are yellow, 20% red, 10% orange, 10% green, and 10% blue. In a follow-up study, samples of one-pound bags were used to determine whether the reported percentages were indeed valid. The following results were obtained for one sample of 506 plain candies. 177 were brown, 135 yellow, 79 red, 41 orange, 36 were green, and 38 of the 506 candies were blue. Use alpha equals 0 0.05 to determine whether these data support the percentages reported by the company. Okay, now this is a classic multinomial population uh, goodness of fit problem. What this question is really asking is, does it look like this data that we collected here, our counts here, this, these frequency counts, do these look like they could have been drawn from this population? And our null is going to be that uh, when we formulate our hypotheses for, for a goodness of fit problem, the null is always essentially that yes, it, it fits. And so our null here is that the population, population distribution matches the specified one. So that's what we really care about is, you know, is the population distribution what they said? We're going to be testing this against the alternative that it does not. Um, and that's generally the case for these multinomial populations. You don't necessarily have to put these proportions in here. You're going to need them later, so you, you may want to. Um, but essentially, the null is always they match. And the alternative is always they don't. OK, now, step two is the same. We're always going to choose a level of significance. The question gives us alpha equals 0 0.05. And so you know that's going to be our alpha. And then we're going to choose a, a test, uh, test statistic. It's going to be the one from our notes for this. It's going to be, I'm going to write it out right next to it. This is it, but as I write it out, you can I'll say it. So it's going to be chi squared equals the sum, that's the big sigma, the sum from i equals 1 to k of f sub i minus e sub i, the quantity squared over e sub i. Now what are these? Well, f sub i is the observed frequency. The question always gives that to you. This is the observed frequency. E sub i is the expected frequency. What, you know, under the null, if we had the perfect bag of M&Ms, how many we would expect to see. Um, K is the number of categories, always. And i is going to index individual categories. So what this is essentially saying is for each category, Take however many you saw, subtract however many you expected to see, and you'll get a deviation from our expectation. What you want to do is square that and then divide it by the expected uh, frequency to kind of weight it, right? So, um, so it's kind of a weighted squared deviation. For each category, we add up those weighted squared deviations, and that gives us chi-squared uh, as a test statistic. Under the null, meaning that if the goodness of fit test matches, or if, if the population is what our null said it was, then this should be, have a chi-squared distribution with k minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, step four as usual, uh, we're going to compute the test statistics. So to do this, we're going to need to find a frequency, uh, an observed frequency and an expect expected frequency for each category. And then we're going to need to find k to get the distribution. We're going to need the sample size to calculate ei. So n equals 506, we know this. We're going to build a table. And this is what the table is going to look like, but I'm going to show you how we build it in Excel. So let me switch over to Excel, or at least uh, just pull that up. So here's Excel. Let's bring this one like this. And put this one over here. And you can see what we're going to want is we're going to want indexes for each category. We have six categories, and they are brown, yellow, red, orange, green, and blue. And for each one, I'm actually going to build this a little bit differently. It, it's fine. It doesn't really matter how you build it. But I'm going to put our observed frequency here because they gave that to us. So our observed frequencies just come right from this table here. First, we have so we have, we saw 177 brown candies. 
we saw 135 yellow candies, we saw 79 red candies, um, 41 orange, 36 green, and 38 blue. 41 orange, 36 green, and 38 blue. This observed frequency is our fi, f sub i. I use underscore for sub when I'm in Excel. So that's our observed frequency. Now we need to calculate our expected frequency. An easy way to do this is to uh, state our, proportion, our expected proportion under the null. So our expected proportion, which you might call p sub i0, it's often the, the abbreviation that I use. Uh, hold up one sec, I'm just going to wrap these. Um, that. Our expected proportion comes from our null, um, and it comes from the proportions that they give us. So they're saying that 0.3 of these are brown, right? 30%, 20% are yellow, 20% are red, 10% uh, are orange, 10% are green, and 10% are blue. And if you want to, you can check to make sure that these add up to 100, and you can see down here, it shows you the sum is 1. Um, that's good. Now, that's our expected proportion. Our expected frequency which is e sub i. The way we find that is we take our expected proportion and we multiply it by the total number that there are, right? So you can take the sum here to find out how many there were. The question told us, but it's going to be 506 to make sure we copied that correctly. And then in every case, our expected frequency would be, okay, would be what we would get from kind of like the perfect bag. So if we had the perfect bag, 30% of them would be uh, would be brown, which is 151.8. Um, 20% of them, I can modify this slightly so that it doesn't move. 20% of them would be yellow, and 20% would be red, so 101.2 for each of those. 50.6% or 50.6 of them, 10% would be orange, 10% green, and 10% blue. And in each of these cases, all I'm doing is I'm multiplying this proportion by this total amount, because this is n, n equals 506. Right? Okay, so that's how I get my expected frequency. Now I have a now what I have is I have an observed frequency and an expected frequency for each category. If you look over at our test statistic, you can see that what I need to do now is I need to come up with a difference. Fi minus ei, that's our deviation. So we'll calculate that here. F sub i minus e sub i is going to be 177 minus 151.8. It's going to be 25.2. If you're doing this by hand, you have to do this several times. But if you're doing it on a computer, you can just copy and paste it. Um, if you've done this right, these should add up to zero. Um, but those are our deviations from our expectation. The next thing we have to do is we have to square this. There's going to be f sub i minus e sub i, the quantity squared. So we take this one and we raise it to the second. That's the caret symbol, the squaring in, a, in Excel. And you just, co again, copy and paste these all the way down. And you get these squared. And then last but not least, we have to take uh, this and then divide it by e sub i. And that's kind of an ugly looking formula. If you want it to be pretty, then what you're looking for is this thing over here. Right? This is this is what we're really coming up with. So what we do is we take this and we do, we take this value from uh, column G now and divide it by our expected frequency from column E. Um, and we copy and paste these all the way down. And this gives us uh, a a weighted squared deviation for each category, right? So we go back over, we have six categories, uh, and we can stretch this out now, and now we have our weighted squared deviation in every case. Oops, a daisy. To find our value of chi squared, it's going to be equal to just the sum of these. So we can sum up this column, and that gives us 29.51. If I did this right, it should be what I had over here to begin with. So. Let's spread this back out. Now that I've shown you how to make that table, I'll show you what it looks like when you make it look nice in in a in Word. Relatively nice. And you can see down here. Have the expected proportion, which we multiply by our sample size to get our expected frequency, our observed frequencies, the difference, the square difference, and then the weighted square difference. You add these up, and 29.51 is what you get. All right, that's step four. Once that's done, you don't need this table anymore, but you do need it to show me that you, you know what you did. 
Okay, now under the null, uh, our test statistic has a chi-square distribution with k minus 1 degrees of freedom. k is the number of categories. Um, in this case, it's 6, right? We had 6 different colors. So our test statistic is going to be distributed chi-squared with 5 degrees of freedom. And if you want to draw it, it looks like this, essentially. This is I actually used Excel to create this, so I, this is actually what it really looks like. Um, but if you really just want to show me that you know what you're doing, draw something like this, draw a little curve like that, chi-squared, 5, and then your test statistic, 29.1, whatever it is, 29.1, 5, 29.5. There you go. Okay, now, I haven't mentioned this yet, although I did in the, uh, in the in the lecture version. Because this is a goodness of fit test, it's always an upper tail test. We want to know, is the difference big or small? And if it's big, we're going to reject the null. So if we get a big chi-square, we'll reject the null. Well, if we look at the chi-squared table, what you'll see is if you go all the way to the right, and maybe I can pull this up while I have you here. Yeah, I have it right here. So we have five degrees of freedom, and you can see that for five degrees of freedom, if we go all the way to the right, the highest it goes is 16.75, and ours is way higher than that, right? What that means is that our area is smaller than 0 0.005, so that's what we can, that's that's how we establish our p-value. We can't calculate it exactly here, but we can bound it. Um, and it's pretty small, right? That's a very small p-value. We can calculate it exactly using Excel, in fact. So if we want to know what that is, we can do equal chi dist. And then we put in this, which is our test statistic, and we have 5 degrees of freedom. And that's uh, 1.838 times 10 to the negative uh, fifth, which is 0 0.00001838, I believe. Something along those lines. Yeah. So that's pretty small. That's like a 1 in... Uh, one in a million chance, roughly. There's a one in a million chance that you would get a 500 candies that look like this, um, that were this far away from that distribution, uh, if the if the null were true. So that is really small probability. If we have a really small probability, what we do is we say this is way less than alpha, which means that we reject the null. There's no way that uh, the candy that the candy that we collected was drawn from that population. It may not, no way. Just really unlikely, right? Chances are better that you're going to win a lottery, um, which is not impossible. It happens every day. Anyway, we, we come to the conclusion that we reject the null. We accept the alternative that these don't match. Um, they must have come from some other distribution. So that's how you do a multinomial uh, goodness of fit test. Our hypotheses are always uh, something slid around. I lost my test statistic. Anyway, our hypotheses are always they match versus they don't. This is our test statistic, which I can just show you the drawn version. It's, calculated, or it's distributed chi-squared with uh, k minus 1 degrees of freedom. We build a table like this to find the squared uh, weighted squared deviation. And then once that's done, we add them all up, and that gives us a chi-squared uh, test statistic. You use that, and we sh you should be good. And from there, it's just like every other problem we've done. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at jjdelaney at ualr.edu, or leave a comment, and I'll do whatever I can to help. Thanks. Bye.